Welcome to LeapFrog BI Academy course BD100 Development Workflow. If you are new to LeapFrog BI, then you're in the right spot. During this course, we are going to cover some of the foundation concepts that are critical to getting the most out of LeapFrog BI and beginning to build agile, high quality data marts. We have three goals. First, we're going to briefly present LeapFrog BI's architecture at a very high level. Second, we're going to introduce component types and discuss their unique role in the development process. And finally, we're going to describe a typical development workflow. So to get started, I'm going to jump over to another browser window where I've navigated to LeapFrogBI.com. And this brings up the first architectural point. LeapFrog BI is a software as a service application, it's a SaaS application, meaning there is nothing to install. As long as I have a modern browser, I can access LeapFrog BI on any device. That could be a laptop, a desktop, uh, it could be a tablet or a phone for that matter. Again, all you need is a modern browser and you're ready to go. Now once I navigate to LeapFrog BI, I access my account by simply logging in. And here we go. I now have all of my projects ready to be accessed. I can begin creating or manipulating components, uh, which you are going to talk about more in a few minutes. For now, uh, the, the point that I want to make is that this is SaaS, and it is quite different from traditional development processes. So let's talk a little more about the steps that are required to utilize this application. I'm going to move over to a workflow definition. There's really three steps in using LeapFrog BI. Before I get into those steps, I want to make another point, and that is that LeapFrog BI will never directly connect to any of your source systems, your source databases or flat files or Excel or REST APIs, whatever it might be. It's never going to connect directly to those systems. And it's also never going to connect directly to, to your destination systems. That there is no, there are no firewall um, exceptions to put in place. Um, there's no security concerns to deal with. So how does LeapFrog BI get the information it needs to to uh, generate the processes required to create and maintain a data mart? Well, it's done via metadata. The first step in the process is to upload metadata or the definition of the source systems to LeapFrog BI. And by definitions, what we're saying is if I have a application, A, and uh, some files that I need to include um, as sources to my data mart, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to profile those systems. And there's automated ways of, of doing this, but for now, just know that we're going to profile those systems and, and data sources. And that profile, which is the metadata or the data which describes my data, is then going to be uploaded to LeapFrog BI. At this point, LeapFrog BI has a thorough understanding of my sources. It knows which tables, which files, which fields, which data types, and so on it's going to be using as its starting point. So with the metadata uploaded, I can then begin actually defining all of the components that when uh, uh, linked together will actually create and maintain a prescribed data mark. Now components, uh, we'll talk about more in a few minutes here, but just know for now that a component is a building block. I can take one component, define it, and use its output as the input to the next component. I can then use that next component's output for the next component, and so on. And these components can be linked together in nearly any way. There are different component types, which we're going to talk about. Each have a very distinct role that is specific to data mart development. With all of the components defined in a way that uh, is going to um, create or define the data mart that I want to generate, I can then move to the deployment step. And by deploying, 
what we're going to do is we're going to request the FAW BI, the SAS application, to build all of the components that are required to create and maintain my data mart. So once I download all those components and I execute them, they will do just that. They will create and maintain the data mart that I have prescribed. So that was kind of a long-winded uh, way of describing three steps, but um, it is very important. So I'm going to re recap it quickly one more time. Step one, we upload the metadata or the definition of our uh, source systems. Step two, we're going to manipulate that metadata by creating components within the FAW BI. And step three is we download all of those components. Once we execute them, they will then create and maintain a data mart. All right, so let's um, shift gears here a little bit and talk a little bit more about components. So components uh, are um, uh, they're, they are the key building block in LeapFrog BI. There are, there are really six different types of components, and we're going to talk about each one of them um, right now. So uh, starting up here on the top, we're going to come back down to this blue and gray section, but let's just start at the top and talk about these five different types of components. The stage and PSA component, we can kind of link or group these two components together. These two components are all about extracting data from some source and consolidating it into a, a historical store. So the two components have different um, roles. The stage component does the extraction piece and the PSA component does the consolidation piece. But together, they are the what I would call the sourcing piece, the data collection and storing of unmanipulated data from my source systems. We can really separate these two components from other components, which are those that we'll discuss next, because we want to be able to collect data and store data separate from actually loading a data mart. Okay, so let's talk about these other three types of components. These three, transform, dimension, and fact, are the types, are the components that we are going to use to define all the transformations that are required and to load the data mart or the dimensions and facts. Now here I have simple arrows pointing from one to the next, meaning that um, the typical uh, process is to do your transformations and then build your dimensions and then Built your facts, but this is just a very simplified view of what a um, uh, ETL process might look like. The key point here is that each of these component types, transform, dimension, and fact, will will uh, carry out their unique role. So transforms will do things like pivots, unpivots, set operations, filters, joins, um, basically anything you can do with data, you're going to do that through your transformations. Your dimensions are going to load and maintain, create as well, dimensions. So this is where I'm going to be defining my dimension keys. I'm going to be um, defining how I'm going to track history or my slow change dimension tracking uh, on each of the dimension attributes. Um, a, a variety of dimension specific definitions will be collected in the dimension component. And finally, you have your fact component. And a fact component is just that. This is where my measures are going to be stored. They're going to, they're going to, um, I'm going to include foreign key, defin foreign key uh, join definitions to each of the related dimensions. Uh, this is where I'll be able to um, include degenerate dimensions if I need to, um, and so on. Now, each of these components, stage, PSA, transform, dimension, and fact, have a variety of templates that I can use to start from. We're going to talk more about each of the different types of templates and when to use which type of template in later courses, but for now just 
just keep in mind that we have these five types of components that are the core components in LeapFrog BI. Now, there, I said six originally, and there's one other type of component, and that is a connection. The connections are stored separately from components, just so we can reuse those connections, and um, it makes the entire development process that much more efficient. Okay, so if we have these types of components, let's talk quickly now about the actual workflow. Well, the uh, um, as we talked about it uh, just a few minutes ago, the first thing we have to do is to um, upload the profiles of our source systems. So let's just say these are our source data systems here. The first step is to create profiles. Now, these, this blue area, for all practical purposes, represents SSIS, or SQL Server Integration Services. So I am going to use SQL Server Integration Services to create profiles that are then going to be uploaded to LeapFrog BI. Everything in the green is LeapFrog BI. So once I have that profile uploaded here, I now can begin creating a stage component. I can create PSA components. And then I can begin, as a separate process, creating my actual uh, transformations and data mart creation components, let's say. With all of those components created, I can then uh, start a build. I can get LeapFrog BI to actually build all those components. Because remember, up to this point uh, here, all these components are simply metadata. There's nothing, there's nothing built. There's nothing downloaded. This is all completely in the cloud. Once I do ask LeapFrog BI to build and I download those components, I'm actually going to be getting, again, SSIS packages, native SSIS packages that are exactly as if you had created them in Visual Studio. Now, once those packages are deployed and executed, then I will have my data mart in place, such as here. So that's it. That's really what the LeapFrog BI workflow looks like. To recap, first, we're going to profile and upload our profiles. That was this step here. The second step is all about defining the components that are required to create and maintain my data mart. And then finally, the third step is just about requesting LeapFrog BI to build and then deploying those components. Now, if we think about or look uh, uh, time-wise, we talk about what it actually takes to complete each of these steps. The uh, profile step, this is extremely short. This might be, um, you know, there's, there's automated processes to both create those um, profiles as well as to generate stage components for that matter. So this piece right here is, is really negligible. You could do hundreds of these um, a day. Whenever you, most of the work is going to be done once you get to your transformations, dimensions, and fact components. This is where you're going to be spending your time defining the, the detailed characteristics of each of these uh, manipulations that need to occur. And then finally, on the deployment piece, again, this, this is a very short time, timeline. Once you build your components using LeapFrog BI, then there are uh, solutions, again, offered by LeapFrog BI that automate the process of of um, executing those components. Okay, so one last point I want to uh, touch on here before we close out this course is exactly what are we doing whenever we're creating data marts. We're going to dive more into dimensional modeling and, and other courses, uh, probably actually nearly every course from this point on is going to be talking about dimensional modeling in some way, but on a very high level what we're saying uh, what we're going to do with LeapFrog BI when we create data marts is we are going to take requirements from our business uh, sponsor, which has asked for some um, data to help answer a question or improve the outcome of a decision. 
Then we're going to go to the source systems with that requirement, and we're going to say, well, does that source system support the requirement? If not, are there other support source systems that I can use to um, to uh, augment the primary source system or whatever the situation might be? Here I have an example of a typical OLTP system uh, source system. You can see there's going to be many tables. Once we have looked at all of that, we said, yeah, it does support the requirements, then we're going to actually define a dimensional data model. We'll again talk about dimensional data modeling in, in uh, subsequent courses, but for now, just know that we're going to create a simplified data structure, and that data structure has two goals. Number one, fast query performance, and number two, we want it to be easy to navigate. You can see, just from looking at this image, that this simple star schema is much easier to understand than a uh, typical OLTP system, which is a very abbreviated version of one. Now, once we know what our source and our destination looks like, we're going to create a data flow diagram. And this is actually going to be um, a very, very much the, um, the uh, source to target mapping. So this is where we're going to say we're starting here on the left side, and we want to get over to our data mart, which is our dimensional data model on the right, what are all the things that we need to do in the middle to make sure that that happens? Each of these things in the middle are components, and that is what we're going to be developing in LeapFrog BI. Okay, so I hope this has given you at least a, um, a, a high-level understanding of what LeapFrog BI is and how it functions. Uh, look forward to uh, talking to you more in subsequent courses where we're going to dive into all the various aspects of developing a data mart with LeapFrog BI in detail. So we'll see you there.